Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our MBA informa information session this evening uh, with RMIT University. My name is Ken Pillai. I'm a marketing manager at RMIT, um, and I'll be your MC for this evening. Uh, today, we'll have Dr. Panos Paparopoulos and Dr. Kendall Herbert from the Graduate School of Business at Law at RMIT um, presenting to us today on our MBA. Um, before we get started, just a couple of uh, housekeeping things. Um, I'll start off with a welcome to country, which is something that we do uh, at RMIT before any major meeting, just to recognize the, the lands that we conduct the business of our university. The RMIT University acknowledges the people of the Woiwurrung and Boonwurrung language groups of the Eastern Kulin Nation on whose unceded lands we conduct the business of the university. RMIT University respectfully acknowledges their ancestors and elders, past and present. RMIT also acknowledges the traditional custodians and their ancestors of the lands and waters across Australia where we conduct our business. Uh, just for housekeeping sake, the presentation will go for approximately 30 minutes. Um, if you have any questions, you can see the Q&A tab uh, on, on Teams. Please type your question in and we will um, endeavour to answer it either by chat or by one of the presenters. Um, if your question doesn't get answered during the presentation, we will have a dedicated Q&A um, session right after the um, presentation ends. Um, so without further ado, I'll hand over to Panos. Ken, thank you very much and uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us uh, tonight uh, from different parts of Australia, uh, Victoria, and perhaps even from uh, different parts of the world. So uh, uh, many, many thanks for uh, taking the time at whatever time it is in your places to join us. And my name is uh, Dr. Panos Paiperopoulos. I know it's hard to pronounce uh, as with most Greek names. Uh, I'm joined with uh, uh, by Dr. Kendall Herbert, uh, who's going to be uh, discussing with you some specifics about the courses, uh, particularly in stage A and some exciting uh, uh, elective courses of the MBA. I am the director of the MBA and uh, executive MBA courses uh, at RMIT University. And as you might have seen on our websites, we're very uh, proud to have uh, one of the most established uh, and one of the most uh, uh, recognized MBAs in uh, uh, Australia over 40 years of uh, delivering the courses to thousands of uh, students at uh, this point in time. So rest assured we're well placed uh, to know how to deliver and uh, what to do with the degrees. Uh, at this presentation today, I'm uh, happy to uh, answer Q and A's as uh, Ken said uh, uh, throughout, and specifically at the end. So bear with me as I go along with the presentation, because quite a few of your questions will be answered uh, from what I'm saying. Uh, MBA, MBAs uh, as a whole. Uh, why should you study an MBA as well? It's a very different degree compared to the uh, MSc and specific uh, masters that lead you towards one trajectory in your career. If, you're, if you decide to do a marketing or if you decide to do an international business or a human resource management uh, degree, then you're placing yourself uh, on a specific uh, uh, kind of uh, business and opportunities in your career uh, for the future. With a MBA degree, you've got uh, advantages that we, we consider as, as a conversion degree, which means that uh, uh, with an MBA, you convert from a previously sometimes non-business uh, background education and a lot of our students, as are going through the presentation, and, and as Kendall will be saying, I come from different backgrounds, uh, uh, either from engineering or from fashion, from education, uh, from uh, uh, degrees like biotechnology or, or computing or uh, all sorts of other uh, degrees, and quite a few from uh, the business administration uh, background, the general management background. But within the 18 months or uh, two years you're going to spend uh, with us doing an MBA, you will get the fundamental knowledge on how to run a business, what does the business require in all aspects and uh, in all fundamental uh, components of it, from the accounting and finance division to the marketing to the strategy uh, department uh, and uh, to the technology of innovation, managing the innovation uh, of a business. So you get the fundamental understanding and then you uh, have the opportunity to apply this and get your head around on how the business world uh, uh, works. Uh, we are, as I said, one of the most established uh, uh, MBAs, and we have on top of that uh, one of the most established uh, design thinking uh, components, which underpins our four MBA uh, programs. Uh, also, even our executive MBA, online MBAs and everything. It's the first course you're going to be uh, dealing with. 
And the first course you're going to be uh, encountering on, on stage A of your MBA uh, course, it breaks down or it changes your idea of how you approach problem solving and opportunity generation by getting you to understand how to work from a human uh, result, from a human element perspective in coming up uh, with ideas. Uh, we got, if we go back to the previous slide, uh, we got a, uh, so design thinking as a first module will then be uh, part of a uh, parcel of what you're doing uh, throughout your degree. We're providing you with uh, real life uh, world business experiences, and these are also part and parcel of uh, nearly all courses you will be doing. Uh, we don't just say that, we actually bring you from the design course and throughout uh, your studies, we bring live partner uh, organizations, uh, big names for, from Australia and even small entrepreneurial firms in, in different parts uh, of your education to make sure that we connect what you are teaching in terms of knowledge and tools to connect them directly with how the businesses can take advantage of this knowledge and you as uh, an MBA student and in teams or individually come up with uh, ideas and solutions for uh, the businesses uh, themselves. Apart from the industry engagement in terms of uh, uh, guest speakers and, and having people that give uh, uh, talks to, to MBA uh, students, the idea that we actually bring these uh, uh, companies inside and you can solve problems makes it an even more exciting and an even more uh, practical way of understanding the knowledge we're, we're giving you. So it's very uh, practical learning. Uh, we've got a business consulting course, which is at the latter part of your uh, uh, program, where you will be uh, learning how to become a consultant, either an internal or external one. And again, working with companies like if you're Australian or, or French or from all over the world, Capgemini, uh, Bupa, Deloitte, uh, um, and smaller ones uh, uh, even uh, that will bring their projects, they will bring their life problems and they will say, okay, guys, this, this is it. What can you do in three months? And we take you and mentor you on how to come up with solutions. Importantly, being uh, understanding that an MBA, you cannot just have uh, one size fits all, although in some cases it does work. But uh, we understand that people want to tailor their education and they want to tailor their uh, knowledge to specific needs that they see uh, are and what attracts them to a specific career path, or if this is uh, something more important for them when they come from different parts of the world. We offer two minor uh, areas, uh, and I'll explain this as we go along in leadership, and one in managing technology and innovation, which is something that uh, RMIT does very well, hence the T in, uh, in our uh, 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 RMIT. Uh, but we also allow you to uh, get any four courses from the College of Business and Law in any discipline, be it marketing or accounting or uh, human resource, entrepreneurship, finance, um, even information technology that we offer within the College of Business and Law and Law disciplines to make sure that you can find out what you want to do and what career path uh, uh, you're going to be um, fulfilling in the rest of your life after you graduate. We are located at the heart of uh, Melbourne CBD and I completely understand these are hard times for everybody with uh, the COVID related uh, restrictions and, and the whole world has changed a bit, but we still remain at the heart of uh, uh, Melbourne, which gives us specific advantages in terms of proximity uh, to the industries. Uh, we're one of the best connected uh, uh, universities with the businesses around uh, the greater Melbourne area and the greater Victoria uh, municipality or state. So we are very, uh, very much aware of how to place the businesses within our courses and we're very much aware of the advantages that we have as a local CBD university that taps into the excellence of these uh, businesses, but then delivers education to people from all over the world and understands what is going on around Australia in the developing part of the world. Uh, we're focused on the set on new technologies and innovation, uh, MPI, uh, a course that I'm actually teaching uh, next semester on the uh, online space, uh, talks about uh, how to manage technology, the emerging and disruptive technologies and what these are bringing uh, to their world and how you can make the most out of them. Not to be afraid, uh, not to overdo it, but how do you manage this technology and how do you keep up with everything that is happening in the world. We've got uh, new courses in business data analytics, uh, so how to derive value from uh, big data, how do you read the big data and what you can do with them. And these courses like the MTI, the data analytics, are courses that we, as an MBA team, uh, and we are underpinned by a very vibrant and 
successful MBA advisory board, industry advisory board, with many, many companies, international and national ones, they give us ideas on what is uh, happening now and what is happening in the future in uh, their industries. And we try to incorporate this and bring them into solid knowledge and courses uh, within the program and make sure that it's always refreshed and always current and topical. And that means that you will be always speaking the, the current language or future language uh, of the world. Assessments uh, uh, frequently asked by students uh, are a blend of uh, individual uh, essays and, and reports to collaborative work. And nearly all our subjects will have uh, uh, one element of collaboration between either you select your own group or you're put into uh, groups. But you will have to present, you'll have to work into teams, and you'll have to understand different nationalities, work with different nationalities, and work under pressure sometimes to make sure that everybody's on the same uh, speed and level as uh, you are. So as much as we do in any business, uh, we try to resemble this thing within the uh, academic space and we give you uh, that in, in, as an assessed part of your uh, uh, coursework. We have it dedicated. Our building is, for people that are local to Victoria or have visited, our building is in uh, uh, Building 13, uh, which is up in uh, Russell Street. Uh, we have a dedicated the home of the MBA and uh, some low subjects. So we have a dedicated uh, lounge, which unfortunately the, uh, the current situation is it is closed. But we transfer this uh, dedicated uh, lounge, an MBA lounge, to online uh, drop-in uh, lounges every week, uh, where you can catch up with uh, myself and uh, Stephanie Bryceland, our student experience coordinator. And other academics and, uh, and uh, other staff of the university, uh, you can interact with the students, you can talk to us, you can express your fears, your anxieties, and we'll help them uh, solve you. Or we can, you can express your desires of where you want to be in the future, and we can tailor your uh, uh, CVs, work with you, just to make sure that you get the most out of uh, your education. Um, the drop, that basically the, the drop in sessions. Um, so we, we try to make it. Even in this uh, virtual uh, environment, we do keep uh, uh, very well uh, contact uh, with you guys. And we also have a very vibrant uh, MBA student association that organizes events to make sure that uh, we keep everybody in touch. And we offer you not just educational, which is uh, world class and outstanding, but also a very nice environment and a very nice feeling of a family of MBAs and people that are in the same shoes. You start in the same position and you want to finish and get the most out of uh, your education in our MIT and our school. If I go to the next uh, slide. Uh, and at this point, I will uh, introduce uh, very shortly Kendall, who can take you through a couple of the courses that uh, she is teaching. But the MBA uh, comprises of eight core courses, as you will say. These are the core courses. Um, that means that you will do them in short of the sequence that uh, you see at the, uh, the slide. So you start with design thinking, uh, you delve into leadership and management, and then you follow on financial analytics, uh, MTI, etc. Up to the last one, which is business consulting. At, at around the stage where you are uh, doing your uh, strategy in business data analytics, uh, you start thinking of what kind of electives uh, you want to tap into, and you've got the choice to go into the technology and innovation electives or the leadership electives. You can either, and this is something we introduced this year, if you want to have an MBA in your transcript with a minor reflected into it, so an MBA with a technology and innovation, then you will complete all the courses within the technology innovation. Or equally, if you want a leadership uh, uh, reflected as a mind in your transcript, you can complete all the leadership uh, electives. But given, again, that uh, people want to have the freedom of choice and exercise that freedom, you can uh, mix and match courses from the different minors, and then you can open up your uh, electives to anything that we offer as a College of Business and Law. And we have uh, several schools with uh, numerous postgraduate uh, electives uh, so that you can choose, in addition to postgraduate internships and also uh, uh, study tours. Now, I'm saying some of the things that will happen hopefully from 2021 when the borders reopen and international travel opens again, and we can be more flexible and resume life as we knew it before. But even in this current situation, we are still offering uh, uh, internships that can be online, and we can still uh, offer uh, um, projects that I will uh, explain in a while, like uh, volume and short, uh, uh, 
shorter internships or extracurricular activities to make sure that you tap into the world of uh, uh, business and you participate in, in, uh, in real life projects and real life uh, uh, workplace. But as a structure, this is how the MBA works. And the assessment, as I said earlier, and I'll ask Kendall in, in a half a second or so to, to jump in. But uh, the assessments I forgot also to mention is the majority of them, if not all of them, are assessed by coursework and reports and essays uh, rather than exams. We only have exams for uh, um, a couple of courses, and these are, irrespective of COVID, these are a takeaway uh, or do it on your computer uh, at your home uh, exams. We never ask the students to come and sit in big uh, auditoriums with uh, uh, you know, desks and the, the old fashioned way, because we, as RMIT, we have moved away from that examination aspect of it to a more authentic uh, uh, types of assessment where we actually place you in real life scenarios and ask you to delve into to the understanding the, uh, the concepts and then explaining this uh, to us. Uh, I've got a question. Uh, what if I'm unsure about what mine or I want to do? Um, you, when you start, uh, uh, you don't have to start thinking about minors uh, or elective uh, uh, courses uh, before your stage uh, uh, B or C of your uh, degree, depending on how you enter it. Uh, so uh, you've got at least uh, a semester or sometimes uh, two semesters before you start thinking about electives. By that time, and going through the first four courses of, of the program, and if you're doing the enabling courses, which I will explain, you still have a, uh, you will work with us and you will see what you like, and then you can uh, uh, basically think, where do I want to go and what do I want to do with our career advisors? And I'm always here to help uh, along with the career advisors to find out, and Stephanie has a, uh, uh, as an experience coordinator, excellent knowledge of these things, on what courses are available and what do you want to do in your life? Even if you decide uh, uh, on an elective, RMIT's policy is that you can start uh, with an elective you can enroll with it, do the first uh, couple of weeks, and then if you decide that you want to change it, you can drop it without any financial implications. So there's a lot of flexibility. But if I uh, could ask uh, Kendall, my colleague, um, and a lecturer in, in uh, management, just to give us a fair perspective of uh, the leadership uh, courses, the, one of the electives, the fast track, and what it is to work with the students, what students you expect in your courses, and just a brief uh, introduction to some courses. All right, thank you, Panos. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Dr. Kendall Herbert. I'm a lecturer in the Graduate School of Business and Law, and I'm heavily involved in a lot of our leadership and organizational behavior courses. Um, what you can expect, you can expect excitement, you can expect a lot of interaction, uh, a lot of peer-to-peer -peer as well as facilitated learning. We have quite a few courses in leadership now. So I've been involved in leadership and management uh, people and organizations and now just recently leading in the age of digital disruption. So across these these courses you delve into some really interesting topics, um, things such as in people and organizations you'll look at uh, organizational structure, politics, teamwork, uh, you'll look in leading in the age of digital disruption, things such as leading for organizational adaptability which is more relevant than ever, um, looking at how to be responsible leaders in an age of digital disruption, how to lead in a global and a virtual setting. So some really relevant um, and contemporary issues in leadership. However, a lot of our um, key and original ideas of leadership are still very important and hold across um, the, the new age of, of digital. And you will learn about those in leadership and management. And really it's, it's, it's very much applied. So you're not just learning about the theory of leadership, but you're really learning about leadership, how it applies to you. So delving into your own strengths as a leader, your weaknesses and the challenges um, of your leadership capabilities and style. And we work to um, really be reflective in your practice. So looking at things such as your emotional intelligence and your cultural intelligence and really doing a personal exploration so that you can identify those strengths and challenges and work towards your ambitions as a leader. Um, and, and like Penel said, you know, a lot of our assessments really quite authentic. So you'll find in those leadership courses, you might do something such as your final assessment would be developing your own leadership plan. 
Uh, so ensuring that at the end of the course, it's not tick, well done, see you later. Um, ensuring that you have a solid action plan so that you can achieve your workplace place ambitions and your leadership ambitions. Um, we also have other courses that are elective that I've been involved in. So recently I was um, working with a colleague over in our School of Management who's a professor in entrepreneurship uh, on the course which is called the RMIT Fast Track Innovation Challenge, which is a really exciting one where you get to work with people from across the entire university. So it's open to all students in the university across all of the colleges and across levels of study. So those leadership lessons, you then actually have an opportunity to work in highly diverse teams um, and put those leadership uh, learnings to practice. For, for, for Fast Track, we work with an industry collaborator. It's really project based. Each semester we have a different project. Um, so depending on what our industry partner is currently experiencing, if they've identified a new opportunity for their business or possibly a challenge, um, that will be posed to you as a student and you will work on providing a solution to the industry partner. So this semester we actually, we began the semester, it was after the bushfires, we experienced some serious devastation from the bushfires earlier this year. Um, and so we were working with NAB. And of course, from that, there was a lot of call in, there was a lot of financial difficulty from people affected by the bushfires. So they posed to us, how can we as um, NAB help to build community resilience in these um, natural disaster prone areas? And then of course, COVID hit and we kind of adapted that to look um, more, more openly at how, how we can provide more, uh, build greater community resilience in times of disaster. So that was a really timely topic. And then across the 12 weeks, we have guests coming in and out. So the teams are all assigned a mentor from NAB that works with each team um, quite closely. We have designers coming through and entrepreneurs and guests from industry and working really closely with RMIT Activator um, to help develop and then pitch back those solutions to the industry partner. Um, there's, there's amazing prizes to be won and from that program we've seen quite a few people move into internships with NAB um, or sometimes NAB has actually invited the team back to have a working group to look at um, actually implementing some of those solutions. So you really do get to work on current business problems and provide real solutions that have po possible impact. Um, and of course, we have our RMIT activator there as well. So if you do have a solution that maybe you worked on that was more applicable generally, you can go into the RMIT activator and actually work on bringing that solution to life. So we have some really interesting electives that you can take. Um, but of course, on that on that leadership front, if anybody has any questions at all, I'd be really happy to answer. We are here to answer your questions. So please shout out if you do have any questions for us. I'll hand back to Panos. Thank you very much, Kendall. Uh, that was a good uh, uh, description. I was actually uh, fascinated looking, uh, listening to, to what you were saying. Uh, we've got some questions running. You can see on the slide in front of you, these are some of the enterprises as a school we engaged in, in semester one, and you can see the big names uh, uh, and some smaller ones. If you're Australian, you probably recognize everybody. If not, some of them are Australian firms, but all the big ones uh, are there, either are giving us projects or working with us in internships or doing guest speeches, uh, uh, thought leadership events in, in any shape and form we engage uh, in too, actually too many enterprises at one time. Uh, I've got a few questions that I can pick up uh, while I'm going through. Uh, there's a question whether there's exposure to computer science skills. Um, the course starts, uh, 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 it gives you the opportunity, as I said, to do elective uh, uh, electives. Now within the College of Business and Law, there are, there, we have a school which is called the uh, um, uh, Information Technology Bittle uh, School, I can't remember the exact acronym, but they have a, a, a lot of computing uh, uh, courses there. I'm not sure so much about programming, if this is what you're asking, uh, but they do have a lot of uh, uh, computing, computer science and computing related uh, skills. Another thing that I, I forgot to mention, quite a few things actually I was uh, thinking, is that we also have uh, uh, micro-credentials which are available to uh, all students and MBA students, and they, we have embedded micro-credentials into the uh, program. What are these things? You can you can Google uh, search the, the micro-credentials, uh, credentials, uh, RMIT. These are short courses usually in the range of uh, uh, anything between uh, two hours to, uh, to a 15 or 16 or 20 hours and some even uh, uh, more extensive. 
where you get a, uh, in an online phase, you go through a short course and uh, pass a test. Is a pass or fail? There is no uh, mark as such. But verify some of the skills that uh, you want to showcase in your LinkedIn profiles and in your CV. Some softer skills and some harder uh, skills. It could be, for example, collaboration, uh, virtual collaborations, like Kendall was saying. So in the leadership, we will have a virtual collaboration uh, or in the marketing uh, embedded micro credential. Uh, it could be working with global clients. It could be um, uh, business consulting skills. There, there are a lot of uh, things that we offer within the MBA to get you not only a degree, but as you go along to get you short, small qualifications that you can showcase immediately after completing a, a course and you can play them up in, in your LinkedIn as well. Uh, but also we are, there are over 400 of them that our students just explore on their own and then uh, uh, takes them to, to different directions and update their skills uh, as they like. We also start our, uh, uh, in only a couple of weeks time, so join us now. <laughs> the applications are still open. Uh, but we also start with a three day induction uh, in the afternoons where I will take you through the program in more detail. You can ask questions about your um, selective choices. All the academics, including Kendall, uh, which we just met, uh, will be uh, online. We also take you through what it is to step up from an undergraduate to an MBA or you, if you haven't done, uh, if you have been outside the education for a few years will get you back to the idea of coming uh, to the university. We do academic skills, uh, uh, writing, refresh your uh, things about uh, plagiarism and how to compose correct essays. And we have networking events uh, with uh, alumni, students and yourselves to get to know each other. It's not just uh, you sitting in front of the computer or in, in the classroom and listening and going back and work. We try to get you, as I said from the beginning, to become a family member of our MBAs and get a nice experience uh, uh, throughout. Even if it is online or offline, we even had the yoga sessions organized by the uh, MBA Student Association just to keep everybody happy and, and uh, energized uh, throughout their programs. Um, if I get a few more questions, um, we can move to the next slide if you want. Kendall, yes. Uh, so, uh, there's just a couple of questions there that I thought that maybe I could tackle. Um, we, we had one uh, in talking about the computer science. I know you talked about that, Panos, um, but of course you can take electives uh, as part of your program and things like you can things like the fast track program. You can actually work with people who will be doing a bachelor of computer science. Um, a couple of the other questions I thought were quite interesting was how up to date are the required reading texts? Of course, we're constantly updating our courses. Um, we, we can't be stagnant. There's so much change. There's so much movement. We as an organization have to be adaptive. Um, and for instance, such, such as some of our new specializations and electives, we just completed the design of leading in the age of digital disruption earlier this year. Um, so so that, the, but after every semester, there were constant improvement, taking on board feedback, updating articles, readings, new research and knowledge to ensure that we're providing you with the most up-to-date and relevant information and knowledge. Um, <clears throat> so I hope I was able to answer that question for you. And another one that I thought was interesting here was, What's the average age? And I think Panos will be able to tell you that. Um, but something that I wanted to talk about, and, and you know, age doesn't necessarily equal inexperience. Um, so don't sell yourself short there. That's something that I've actually grappled with um, as, as an employee, as a leader, um, as an individual, um, being a younger person in a, in a, in a profession. So don't don't equate age to experience. Um, it is my my say there. It's you know you're never too young to do something. If you've got the capabilities and skills, that shouldn't ever hold you back. I'll pass back over to Penos. Thank, thanks, Kendall. Uh, yeah, uh, I completely agree with your last statement. And I remember me teaching uh, people in their forties and fifties when I was twenty-five, <laughs> which was quite a uh, other uh, times. Uh, um, but it. it it, it is not a matter of age and we have executive MBA students like the uh, who are 21 years old because they've been working for over 10 years and running some businesses you wouldn't even believe uh, what they're doing. So you shouldn't be intimidated. People are in their mid 20s on average. Uh, quite a lot come uh, straight after their first degree, um, which is admirable. And this is something I've done as well. I moved from uh, one degree to the next uh, one after the other, especially as an international I was doing my degrees in, in UK. And it makes sense and reduce the transaction cost of going back and coming back again. So 
uh, you're absolutely fine in in terms of uh, uh, age. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't worry it at all. Reading tasks exactly as Kendall said. I'm not going to repeat it, but uh, we are keeping updated with everything. In addition, of course, to not forgetting the fundamentals that you need to learn uh, as theories, even if some of the documents are slightly older, uh, they are there for a specific reason. Uh, focus on much on the MBA coursework. <laughs> no, no, there is a, a very little. This is not an MSc in accounting or in finance or in economics. This is an, uh, the purpose of the MBA is to get you to understand the fundamentals of business and how to act in the middle to higher up uh, business world. And this is where you need to understand the finance, but not do the finance yourselves. So there's only one course, as you can see, uh, as a core course. And that doesn't require uh, uh, much mathematical knowledge. You, 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 even if you haven't done them for the past uh, five or ten years, you're absolutely fine. And, and our uh, colleague who's teaching at SIMA is excellent uh, in, in getting you through these things. If you are keen to, uh, or you have a background in engineering or in finance, you want to continue that front, you can pick up courses, uh, as we said, from the um, uh, College of Business and Law. Uh, so, in, uh, another thing I, I, I've seen is whether the internships are paid. There are uh, multiple extracurricular activities, and as I said, you have to not just focus on the core subjects, but grab everything we offer you so your CV becomes uh, uh, an outstanding and literally a CV that stands out from the competition. So, we've got paid internships. But uh, uh, there is a career hub in the university uh, that you can apply for the jobs that they advertise. You can take it on your own. So you can look through the websites that exist in Australia and find a business uh, uh, and then that offers internships and proceed and see how you can uh, uh, work with them. There are up, uh, some of them are paid, some of them are unpaid uh, uh, industries, uh, uh, internships. Uh, We've got a partnerships with uh, both Ripen and Voli. Voli is a, uh, an NGO or sponsors uh, a lot of uh, projects for uh, not-for-profit organizations from across the world. And this can range from uh, a few weeks uh, to a whole semester. And students actually uh, do these unpaid voluntary industries, uh, sorry, internships, because they see the value of getting the knowledge, working with people and getting to see how what they learn actually translates uh, in the world. Sometimes they even play around with the idea, do I like that industry? Should I actually do an internship to see whether I, this is for me? And uh, they find out that they actually love it or this is not exactly what they want and they move to another project. So it depends. Sometimes they're paid, sometimes they're not, but we encourage people to just go for it, dedicate your skills and, and take the opportunities we offer with multiple sources we have for the internships and just add them to your experience, your CV, especially if you are like one of our uh, previous uh, uh, students was asking in a younger uh, generation. Um, they've got a question about how many ideas, as I said, you can see on the slide that you have in front of you, the people are in the mid twenties, uh, the classes are mostly between nine and 6 p.m. But now in the online space, sometimes they go up to 8.30 p.m. and we accommodate for uh, um, you know, people working in the mornings or doing other things, and we can we can switch them over to slightly later. We've got a few courses, a couple of courses that are actually on in intensive mode over the weekends, the design thing and the business consulting. So there is a blend of uh, getting you from a nine o'clock to two o'clock on a Saturday and Sunday, and then continue with uh, 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 weekly seminars and tutorials uh, over the course of the semester. The backgrounds, as you can see, come from students come from all sciences and from different nationalities. We can go to facts number two slide while I'm picking up some questions. Uh, how many ideas have been so far successful in real life businesses from the RMIT Activator program? I can tell you that uh, 15 or 16 percent by the data that we have of our students actually start their own businesses. Uh, it's not just if they engage with the activator uh, program, but they, they switch from uh, the idea of being employed uh, to actually starting their own uh, business. We got digital entrepreneurship as now part of both minors and a very popular elective. We just launched it and it's getting a lot of traction for the semester too. Uh, but we want to see people uh, be happy on what they want to do. So they need, then you need to try something if you, if you think that paid employment and working for somebody else and giving your best is not for you, then try entrepreneurship. And a lot of our students do, at least at some point in their life or in a later part of their life. 
Um, Ken has uh, posted the link uh, so you can click and see what real life uh, examples from RMIT Activator are uh, out there. Uh, in terms of professional experience before the MBA, as I said, you can come with no experience whatsoever. Uh, and you can come with, uh, with some, some of our students have seven or eight years uh, experience and, and they want to take advantage of the international visa uh, and temporarily stay after uh, your MBA that, they, uh, that Australia offers. So even though they have a bit of experience, uh, they come into the project, but they come to the program. But it, the combination of people from different backgrounds, if you see yourself as a student, different backgrounds, different nationalities, different levels of uh, where they are in their lives and different ways of thinking is what makes it very fruitful within an, uh, uh, an academic environment to engage with your peers. We don't, we don't just teach you and um, me speaking all the time, but we actually engage in conversations so you can learn uh, from each other. Uh, I can see an answer for a graduate certificate. Uh, Background in science will be relevant to this program. The MBAs, yes, the, the MBA identity uh, in itself or the reason why we created MBAs over 100 years ago is exactly to teach people with no business background or with very limited business background the fundamentals of business. So anybody from anywhere can start a, a, an MBA. You can see the admissions requirement uh, on whatever related or, uh, qualification you have. You can start a, a, an MBA, you will not feel that you're in a disadvantaged position compared to other people. There are some that have done a business background or a management that they, need, they feel more familiar with some of the courses. So stay along and, and work with them closely um, and get some pick from their brains because they will be very helpful. But uh, you, don't, you, you do not need to be afraid if you haven't got a business background. Um, the seminars and the slides and the presentation and our voices uh, uh, will be in our images will be available to you after your presentation, so you can go back to the recording. Uh, can this in the, can industries be undertaken if somebody is working uh, full time? If you are working full time, there is the option to do the uh, MBA as a part time student, uh, just because you might be overwhelmed uh, by doing four courses in one semester. So it, it works much better to step back a bit uh, and do one or two courses per semester. Uh, talk to me and, and Steph as well, how you feel about uh, uh, doing more than two courses. Yeah, you, as we said, we, you can start be ambitious and brave and start with uh, a few. And then you say if you, you are feeling a bit overwhelmed, you can uh, uh, drop it uh, down to, to a more manageable degree, uh, a more manageable number of uh, uh, courses. Um, Somebody, yeah, you live in Sydney, you're working full time. There is an alternative. Uh, if you are working uh, full time in a, in a, or you are in different parts of Australia, you can look on the RMIT online uh, MBA. It is an accelerated uh, program that takes one course per uh, every two, uh, sorry, one course uh, every two months or, or teaching periods. Uh, and it works very well for people that are uh, outside. Uh, uh, Victoria and they cannot uh, join our ranks. Uh, we can post a link uh, if you can, Ken or somebody else and reply to that question with a link with the RMIT online or I'll do it as I'm speaking. Uh, so I'm going through the questions. Um, if we're going to complete an undergraduate degree in June 2021, can we join in July 2021 MBA program? Um, if Yes, if you are a uh, um, if you finish on time uh, and you got all your transcripts and verified and everything, then yes, you could uh, uh, join in July, uh, but it will depend uh, largely on how fast and efficient your previous university, or maybe in RMIT if you're one of ours, uh, is in producing you the transcripts and make sure that you have a course that and we can take you on board. Uh, so the, the courses, uh, we, we can ask, we can check this and double check that. Assuming travel restrictions, um, I think I found the RMIT online, so if I can go back. Oh, yes, you could, uh, Kian, thanks for uh, posting for the RMIT online. Assuming travel restrictions are lifted by this time, then we all, uh, hopefully they will. Will there be an opportunity to do an entire semester uh, uh, overseas? Uh, uh, or a European international opportunities available? Uh, yes, and, uh, um, we have, and 
I should have placed a bit more emphasis on that. Uh, we have study abroad uh, opportunities. We, as RMIT, we have campuses in uh, Vietnam. We have uh, in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, we also have a campus in Singapore, and we have a campus presence in uh, Esade in uh, Barcelona. Now, uh, a lot of our students uh, take the opportunity to study uh, MBA courses, core courses or elective courses uh, within uh, these uh, uh, within the broader RMIT community. So they travel to Vietnam for a, a semester or two, so they, uh, for a course or two, or they go to Barcelona and uh, study a course. If we've got partnership uh, organization, partnership uh, universities, uh, and we are always open to find universities that want to work with us. Uh, and if the program matches, then we can actually, uh, you can study abroad for a, a semester and we will credit you the courses back uh, in uh, our MBA. Uh, just before the whole COVID uh, um, situation erupted, for example, uh, we, we've got a program potentially happening with a Greek university and exchange of academics and staff uh, uh, and actually a sponsored one uh, by from the Erasmus uh, Plus. So there are always uh, opportunities and there are students that are actually study abroad. Uh, and we also have students that do study from abroad uh, one course or two in ours and then take those and credit them back uh, in their places. Let's see if we've got any more questions. Uh, yes, admissions. Uh, so you have a bachelor's degree or equivalent overseas qualification or higher qualification in any discipline with a minimum uh, GPA of uh, one out of four. So you don't have, uh, you have to have a bachelor of business or any other discipline as long as your GPA is uh, one out of four. Now, to one out of four to translate will be um, I'm pretty much true for about 50% and above in, in most in most uh, uh, translate across the different types of education uh, institutions in the world. Uh, once you put your application in, if you're unsure about the GPA, the admissions team uh, will be able to uh, quickly match or automatically match uh, whether you meet that. But it can be on any discipline, uh, not just a bachelor, not just a, a bachelor in, uh, in business. Uh, you can also uh, enter through the graduate certificate in business administration uh, as well, which is an alternative uh, path. I'm not sure if we have it here, but I can uh, post it quickly. And if I copy from the website, or if you can, you want to find it, I'll do it straight away. This is an alternative uh, uh, entry to the uh, MBA. It consists of the first uh, four courses uh, uh, of the MBA. And you can see there that um, uh, the admissions are slightly lower than an MBA because we basically test you whether you are capable of living to the expectations and the, and the demands of the program, and then we move you to the um, uh, MBA. Are there any open international student course scholarships for the February 2021? Uh, uh, I'm not really sure about the scholarship. There are over 2,000 scholarships uh, within RMIT. And we have MBA and EMBA um, specific ones, but to, to be absolutely honest, uh, looking forward for the next year, I'm not really sure, but uh, uh, we can f what will be available uh, at that point. But there are over 2,000 scholarships, including international scholarships uh, from RMIT for uh, various uh, disciplines. I, um, I just saw a, a question pop up. How many education hours is there per week? I understand that there is a lot of self-study, but keen to understand how to understand how much contact time there is. Um, and, and that depends whether you're in online or face-to-face -face mode. Face-to-face um, -face mode, we usually run, um, I mean, it can be a three-hour seminar or it might be more of a lecture tutorial style, mostly seminars. Um, but obviously with COVID-19, we are running those online at the moment. However, we do have webinars, um, but we are moving as well to blended learning styles where there are online style activities that are interactive, uh, where there's peer-to-peer -peer learning as well as facil facilitator learning. Um, and maybe you've gathered your thoughts, um, Panos, to, on the... Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, just to explain uh, uh, to students, they, the 1.5 year duration, and I should have mentioned that on the program, there are two variations to the program. The one, the two year uh, has a four courses, which are uh, uh, the enabling courses. So if you don't have a business background, you start with these four uh, university wide uh, enabling courses that take you through the fundamentals uh, of business. And that means that you can come 
from as a lot of the students, as I said, from any different background, uh, being arts, science, chemistry, engineering, whatever else. You start with uh, the courses that are managing people, business and government, global business and social uh, technology and accounting for managing decisions. If you do these four courses, you pass them and then you continue to uh, stage B. So if you don't have any uh, discipline background in business or management or uh, human resources or uh, an equivalent uh, to business marketing, for example, uh, you can come through the two-year uh, program and you will be, uh, again, an MBA uh, students as a lot of our uh, students are doing. Uh, that, that's the, the related disciplines. Is, it's not just a bachelor in business. It could be, as I said, a bachelor in marketing, in human resources, in, in, in business and law, in business and education. Just as long as there is some sort of uh, business element to it, then you will go to the straight away to the 1.5 year duration. Thanks for that, Panos. Um, that concludes the, the formal part of our presentation. Now, we've just got time for a couple of questions that haven't been covered. Um, I've got one here from, from Graham. How many uh, education hours is there is there per week? So how many hours per week contact time? Yeah, you've got uh, uh, 36 contact hours with academics like myself or uh, Kentel. Uh, it could be on uh, 36 hours of uh, uh, contact with the academics, either in the online space um, or face-to-face, -face, depending on how we deliver. And then the expectation is, as with nearly all universities across the world, is you will do about 100 hours of uh, uh, private study. That is That includes your um, uh, preparatory reading for seminars and tutorials, your uh, group work uh, uh, assessments, uh, etc. So about 140 to 150 hours is the required time per an entire course. Uh, Thanks for that, Panos. Um, we've got another question that's just come in here. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll read it out. Uh, it's, it's a long one, but hi, I have just graduated from a Bachelor of Biomedical Science and I would like to start a healthcare uh, software company and I would like skills in computer science, coding, AI, business, biotechnology. Um, however, I can only study so much. I am more so just asking if you think this is the program for me, as I would like many more skills, business being only one. And, uh, brilliant question. Uh, yes, uh, the MBA will give you in the MBA will give you in the fastest possible time uh, a complete overview of uh, the business uh, skills that you need. Uh, so it will be, uh, in a sense, your your condensing the three or four years of a bachelor degrees in business, uh, uh, but on a higher level within an MBA, which is a one and a half or two years duration. So from that perspective, uh, it, you are spot on that this is the correct one. Now to do coding, um, we do teach managing technology and innovation and, and blockchain and artificial intelligence, but we don't teach uh, coding as such. Nevertheless, the uh, College of Business and Law and that's where you have the opportunity to tailor it. Yeah, you can, and if I find it, um, uh, Cobol RMIT, if I find the digital uh, department. So the School of uh, Business IT and uh, Logistics uh, basically has uh, a lot of uh, courses in information systems, supply chain, logistics, uh, et cetera, where you can actually information systems, where you can learn uh, some of the uh, skills that uh, uh, you probably want to pick up on uh, coding uh, potentially. The thing that you need to also be more aware as as as, uh, um, as you plan your career is that if you're planning to start your own business, you need the skills of a business and you need the entrepreneurial skills. And a good entrepreneur, as you will uh, learn, tries to find out people that will work for him and with him. So you don't need to do everything uh, because it's nearly impossible for you to manage a business, do the coding, do the marketing, learn about everything, do the supply and find the customers, do the sales. So we will teach you what an entrepreneur and a business uh, consists of and who you need to work with in order to be able to uh, uh, perform in your business uh, world. But yeah, they, within the business, the cause of business law, there are uh, computing courses but how deep into the uh, programming, this is not a computer science uh, degree, neither the business school has that much uh, depth in, in terms of uh, coding. Thanks for that, Panos. Um, just conscious of time, we'll, we'll, we'll um, probably answer three more questions here. 
um, and then we will conclude the webinar. If you have any questions in the chat that haven't been answered, um, don't worry, we will attempt to answer them at the conclusion of this webinar via the chat. Um, so we, we, we will respond to all questions. So I'll just finish off with, with two more. Um, maybe maybe one for you, Kendall. Um, someone's asked here, what, what is the demand for MBA graduates at the moment? Thanks, Ken. Um, well, uh, there, there's large demand for MBA graduates. And actually, I think Panos might be better posed to answer this one because he just pulled out some statistics that I saw he sent over to me this week. Um, so I might actually handball that one back to Panos. What is the, yeah, the, from all the degrees, and I was saying that because we just had a, um, statistics from the Association of uh, Business Schools uh, in the United Kingdom and some surveys, but uh, the MBA is continues to be, after 100 years of uh, delivering them, one of the most desirable uh, degrees in, in the industry and most recognizable degrees in the industry. Uh, so the, the desirability of an MBA is, uh, might be going through some careers every now and then uh, or some phases. But overall, uh, it always is uh, much higher than uh, uh, most of uh, the other uh, undergraduate and so postgraduate degrees uh, in the market. So you really cannot go wrong with investing in education uh, and you really cannot go wrong with investing uh, an MBA. Our uh, return on investment uh, for executive MBA and MBAs are, is, is fantastic in terms of how much uh, uh, return you get and what money you get. But uh, after you graduate from an MBA, and from all the postgraduate degrees, it is always the MBA that has the highest return on investment than any other uh, degree you will uh, uh, do in a postgraduate level. Just a quick one, it's 36 hours per course, uh, not for the entire MBA. So if you're doing four courses uh, in one semester, that means that you have 36 hours for each course uh, for, with uh, contact time with us. Uh, and about 100 hours for each course of private study. So 150 times uh, four, although we didn't say that we won't test your maths, but uh, it's uh, 600 hours overall of uh, learning, teaching, participating, engaging uh, for a full semester uh, of uh, our MBA. You've got my details, mobile work, my LinkedIn accounts, my websites and, and Skype. Uh, so if you need any of the questions, go back again, listen to what we said. Uh, uh, and I'm happy to pick up uh, individual conversations and answer more questions if guys uh, you need that. Can I'm cautious about uh, the time and if we're still live or we're still recording. Um, but I do want to say a massive thank you before we lose everybody uh, to all the participants uh, for staying and for uh, throwing us uh, some really interesting uh, questions. Kendall, if you want to say. Well, thanks for having us and we hope you choose the MBA. It's a huge challenge, but with some dedication and applied hard work, um, it's really rewarding. You'll come up with a strong network and a, and a great understanding for business. Thanks to both Panos uh, and Kendall for the webinar this evening. Um, thanks to all our attendees, especially the ones who stayed on uh, after 6.45. Um, we've, we've put some links in there to our website for more information, or you've got Panos's contact details there if you'd like to contact, contact him directly as well. Um, thank you again for attending, and we hope to see you soon.